Today, we are talking specifically about the modern day ICOC or International Churches of Christ. So some of you have mentioned to me on different occasions how the ICOC is really insidious in the way that they do things that is different than the current ICC, International Christian Church. So I want you to know, I, I hear you. Um, I have some thoughts on that that I'm gonna share in another conversation. But for this discussion, we are going to dig into that a bit because I do see validity in that and, and I agree to a large extent that the ICOC now, and for those of you who have been in the church over the last 10 years, probably, and you've expressed some of you that there is a difference in terms of the way that they operate that makes it a little harder to address when, when it's bundled together with the ICOC back in the 90s and early 2000s, the ICC, which is much more, you know, alike with the quote unquote old ICOC. So, so without any more hesitation, we're going to talk about ways that the ICOC in modern day times and modern day meaning after the whole Henry Crete letter scandal back in 2003, all the way past 2006 when the ICC started out of Portland, Oregon, to today, 2024, as of the making of this video. I want to address some of the specifics with the ICOC now and in recent years. I, I agree that it is it is more insidious, or you can argue that. And I want to say this for all the people who have been in a church recently and in, in recent years, people who have voiced their experience and why some of you may have had trouble leaving or seeing the church for what it truly is because of the things that I'm going to mention and probably things that I'm not going to mention. So this is by no means an exhaustive list. This list is just a few of the core issues that I have personally observed. And, you know, there's, of course, there, there's more and anyone can offer feedback and throw some other things in there. But of course, this is just one short video. It's not going to be all the things in all every detail. So, that's out the way. Let's talk about some of the reasons that the modern day ICOC is so, so insidious. Reason number one is they keep saying, well, at least we're not the ICC. We're not the ICC. Their whole stance ever since the ICC started in 2006 has been well, we're not them. That's Kip's group over there. Kip left. We got rid of him. So their whole rhetoric has been Kip is gone. You know, the, the wicked king is dead. You know, we, we got rid of him. We are, you know, we're new. We're different now. And whatever you can bring up in the church you know, when there are issues and you try to address some of these systemic issues that are still there and, you know, have always been there, they'll say, well, at least we're not the ICC. You know, we're doing the best we can. You know, no one's perfect. We're, we're trying, you know, we're, we're, we're not as bad as they are. And some people have shared with me that the modern day ICOC really emphasizes how bad the ICC is and, you know, they're super legalistic and they're, su they're this and they're that. And 
they they're not like them. So it's a lot easier to point to someone else and say, look, they're worse than I am. At least I'm not that. When you're equally as bad. You know, and this is no fat shaming here, but if you're 600 pounds, but the person, your friend is 800 pounds. The ICOC is like the 600 pound person and the ICC is like the 800 pound person. And the 600 pound person is saying, well, I'm not, I'm not as fat as you. And that's, that's really like how they, you know, in comparison, they make themselves look better and, and they, you know, they can tell members, listen, you know, we're, they may say different things like, well, we're still recovering from the effects of the ICC, but we're much better now. We're, we're always working to improve. We're always, you know, doing our best, you know, and a lot of the ICOC, as far as what I've observed online, it's structured just like, of a corporation, you know, there's all of these committees and I mean, literally I'm going to, I'm going to, um, upload a video on the structure of the ICOC today and what they say about the, their own organization. And it is, you know, it doesn't sound like the so-called kingdom of God. Like they say, it sounds like a fortune 500 global corporation. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't sound like, you know, that was the blueprint that Jesus would have left or even the first century church per se. But that's the first manipulation is that we're not the ICC. When in reality, they are just like the ICOC. The ICC and ICOC are step siblings. They have the same well, not step siblings, half siblings. They have the same evil father, Kit McKeon. And there's there's the same rhetoric, it's the same teachings, the same first principle studies, the same structure, the same practices, the same beliefs. But we're gonna get into why, you know, it's so sneaky with those things because they're going to say, yeah, but we're not the ICC. We don't, we don't practice what they do or, or say what they say, but we're going to see why that's a lie too in a minute. So the next manipulation is the God loves you rhetoric. The, he wants the best for you rhetoric. I did a video um, I called it the ICOC says to seek the cult first in 2024. And this was a prime example of this type of talking point where they use the same, you know, cult doctrine as the ICC, but they couch it in, but God loves you. God wants what's best for you. So that's why you obey versus the ICC just comes straight out and says, you need to do this because otherwise you're going to hell. And, and the whole God loves you rhetoric, he wants the best for you rhetoric. So you should fill in the blank, seek the kingdom first. You know, um, in that video, we talked about the, what they called a kingdom mindset. Um, it's very manipulative because it's really the church telling you what to do, the ICOC, but, and, and it's the same teachings from the first principle studies. It's the same thing that the ICC, you know, and going back to the, we're not the ICC thing. The ICOC is the, is the mother of the ICC. So the irony of them you know, to say, well, we're not them. You birthed the ICOC, you birthed the ICC, but they use this, you know, it is the same beliefs, it's the same practices, but they, they're using it in a way that is framed differently. And so 
it becomes harder for some people to really pinpoint what the real issue is, even though for those of you and, and anyone listening to this that might be currently in the ICOC right now, that you know something's wrong. You know that, you know, this it's bad. You know that it's toxic. You see the red flags, you see the cult flags, but you know, it's couched in this, well, God loves you. God wants the best for you. This is why the motivation, why you, you, you do what we're saying versus being in your face and rebuking you and saying, you must do this. And, and in my opinion, I think that's even worse than being off the rails, like the old days of the ICOC. But in my other video, I'm going to break down why that's not exactly true in my experience. Um, I think, I think the modern day ICOC and the old ICOC have more in common than what some people might think. But this, you know, God loves you. God wants what's best for you. You know, the modern day ICOC is really on their, you know, big daddy loving mommy, you know, bag. And they want you to feel like they're a loving parent and that they're, they're guiding you instead of, you know, instead of being more, you know, harsh correction, they're guiding you to the way that you should go. And, and it's hard for, you know, people to see what it is on its face sometimes, or it makes it easier to be in denial about what the church is. Moving on, the next manipulation I've observed is using scripture. So this never gets old. They're always going to use the Bible as the tool for manipulation. And so every video I show on the modern day ICOC, there's Bible verses used. And it's used in a particular way that is very manipulative. It's very low key. It's very subtle. It's not directly, for the most part, it's going to vary across different ICOC congregations throughout their structure, organizational structure. But overall, you know, it's definitely a kinder, gentler beating you over the head with the Bible or using a verse to prove their talking points. And I just want to add a lot of these manipulations I'm bringing up all overlap with each other. And in this, you know, definitely is going to overlap with the final one, which I'm going to discuss in a second. And in my opinion is the most darkest, the most manipulative of them all. But Bible scriptures, you know, the Bible is the tool that they use and they are always going to use the Bible because that's what they call their standard. And, you know, the Bible being the infallible word of God, you know, as if you accept that core belief, as the infallible piece, then whatever they say, it's just hard for people to push back against Bible scripture and say, or let me reframe it this way. The way that they teach it, they, they still teach it in a way that if you push back against it, what they're teaching, they make you feel like you're pushing back against God's word that you're pushing back against what the Bible says, which equals what God says. And so if you question it, if, you know, they still teach the Bible verses in, in a way that insinuates to members that there is no other way to interpret this scripture, if that makes sense. 
modern day ICOC teaches Bible verses and scriptures as if what how they're teaching it is the way they never throw it out there and ask well what do you think that means you know it's never up for question and and i mean that in terms of the um you know the core teachings i'm not talking about maybe a bible talk discussion and the leader of the group may may ask something really um you know, like they're looking at uh, a particular verse and they're like, you know, oh, well, we just want to find out what the visitors think about this or how does, what does this, you know, make you think of? Typically when it comes to the core teachings, it's just totalitarian. And what they say it is, is what it is. You know, especially when they're preaching from the pulpit when they we're teaching in the first principle indoctrination studies and in modern day times those studies are still indoctrination studies it's still all indoctrination which leads us to the final point i want to make today and i think that this is the worst of them all and that is the subtle undertones an undertone is very um is very sneaky it's very deceptive it is a constant form of, of gaslighting in the sense of well let me reframe it this way the word gaslighting is appropriate here i know it's very overused on the internet these days but everything that they say for the most part, the modern day ICOC has these cult undertones to it. It has these, these controlling, you know, what they would consider ICC teachings or old ICOC teachings. Those teachings still exist. They still believe that they're the only true church. But the only difference now is the way that they frame that and say it it's not direct, it's indirect, it's implied. And that's where the gaslighting comes in. It's subtle. It's it, the undertone of what someone says is more powerful than the thing that they're actually saying. And your brain and nervous system picks up undertones of what someone's saying. When you think about it, when, if someone implies they're going to hurt you Doesn't that feel more insidious than, or creepy or scary or intimidating than someone that says, I, I'm going to break your neck right now. Versus if someone says, you've got five minutes to run. And that is the ICOC in modern day times. They will say it in a different way in such a, such a loving, gentle way you know, like I said, they're on their, you know, they're on their soft, they're in their soft era. They're in their gentle era. They'll say things that are so, you know, are, are so subtle, but it's the same teaching as the ICC and the quote unquote old ICOC. But now they're saying it in a kinder, gentler way. You know, one of the things that, you know, they will say as far as, for example, the ICC will directly say, yes, we are the, not the ICOC, the, the ICC, the International Christian Church. The, the ICC will say, we are the only church. Yes. Yes. Check our resume. We are the only true church. We are the only safe people. Anyone that is not part of our church is going to hell. They will literally say that. And I think I have videos on this channel, you know, clipping that being said. But the ICOC will say, oh, no, we're not the only Christians. We don't teach that anymore. But when you 
you know, dig a little deeper, you find out, well, yeah, no, they still believe that they're just not going to overtly say that they'll say something like, we're not the only true church. We just haven't found other people yet doing what we're doing. And that is the same thing, but they're just, you know, hiding it. And that's what makes it worse. At least the ICC and the so-called old ICOC, you know, was up front with it. But the ICOC now in modern day times, you know, they, they're not up front with it. They won't be honest about what they believe. And you have to really be tuned in to the subtle undertones of what they're saying. Another way of saying undertones is double meaning. So, so much of what they say has this double meaning to it. For example, again, you know, the ICOC a few weeks back, you know, had a sermon and he was talking about having a kingdom mindset. They're, they've become really adept nowadays at speaking to people's pain, speaking to people's desires, you know, really trying to seem like they're, they're modern, to seem like they're in tune with the people that, you know, so, so they're worse than the ICC it, you can argue that they're worse because they really do, you know, make it seem like one, you know, like if you, if you're criticizing them, that it's unwarranted, that it's, you know, that it's, it's invalid, you know, that they do have a committee for multicultural issues and they have, you know, um, a ministry, you know, for people, um, with mental illness and, you know, they, like they speak to so many of the current social issues and cultural issues. And, you know, I mean, I saw them do a workshop on finances and there's so much that they, you know, they've adapted to in their rhetoric that makes it hard to question them for some people, you know, you know, I I can see right through it. I can hear everything that they're really saying. But if you're in the church, it might be a little hard for, you know, for some people. And especially if you're struggling with, you know, wanting to wanting to leave or wanting to see the truth. Um, let me do that again. Especially if you're struggling with seeing, you know, the church for what it is and and you know, you're considering leaving. It's, it's so much double meaning to the things that they say. And then you, you know, you add to that all of the, you know, all of the ways that, you know, nowadays they have a ministry for every demographic of people. And once upon a time, quote unquote, you know, they would say, oh, that's a worldly occupation. You shouldn't go into that. And the way they've adapted is, oh, well, let's, let's have a ministry for that. And, and so now it's, and the ICC is doing that too, by the way, you know, quiet is kept or not so quiet is kept, but the ICOC has really adapted and they, you know, and, and they've softened their, their, their external, you know, um, talking points and, and where the truth really comes out is in practice. And I did a video a long time ago about this, where I said, if you want to test, if the ICOC really is different now, break the rules, break the unspoken rules, you know, date someone from, um, a different church. In fact, if you really want to find out, date someone from the ICC, you know, and act like they're saved, you know, or date someone that's not a Christian or date someone that's not in their church, it's a different Christian church, a different denomination, date someone Catholic, you know, 
and bring them to church with you and, and see how they respond. See what happens. See when things are very subtle, when the manipulation is very subtle, when a cult operates very subtle, subtly, you have to test the waters to see what they truly believe. You know, the power dynamic is still there. The cult doctrine is still in, in play. There's no way they can exist without it. It's the foundation of everything they believe. They still do the first principle indoctrination studies. They haven't gotten rid of that. You know, they, they still, even if, you know, some, some churches I was told don't practice disciple, official discipling of partners in terms of assigning people directly to one another. Some churches do it in a group form now, like, oh, you're part of this, you know, Bible talk or whatever. But there, the form of control still exists. The structure is still intact. You just have to find the right thing to, to disobey, and then you'll see them flex. And then when they flex their power, you'll see, okay, someone pulls you aside to talk to you. Um you know, again, you know, try going to a different church, you know, test the whole thing with seeking the kingdom first, question what a leader does, push back against something that's a teaching. Just because they're saying it softer and gently doesn't mean that, you know, it's any better than the ICC or the old ICOC. It's the same rhetoric, whether you say it soft and gently or, you know, and you suggest it because, you know, God wants what's best for you versus, you know, saying you better do this because God is going to spit you out of his mouth. It's still the same rhetoric. I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here. I hope this was beneficial for people who were in the church in the last decade or so. And and you can see that the subtleties of it, especially if you're listening to this, if you found these videos and you're in the ICOC now, it is still a cult. It's always been and always will be. It's And in fact, it's just a watered down version of the old ICOC. It's a watered down version. It's a light diet version of the International Christian Church. And it's worse because you know, on the surface, they pretend to be, you know, the kinder, gentler church and that they've thrown away those old controlling ways and, and those limiting beliefs. We don't believe we're not the only, we're the only church. We don't enforce discipling or we don't get on people's backs because they don't come to church anymore, you know, or they don't see, you know, it's not as intense as it used to be. Um, there, it, there's a lot This, you know, m has changed externally. The window dressing may look different in a lot of ways, but don't be fooled by that. Listen to your gut. Know that if something feels wrong, you know, internally, you know, when your intuition, your gut, or, or if you call it the spirit, whatever it is that is telling you, and you know, deep inside that something's wrong here, that that is not lying to you. Um, they're worse than, you know, the quote unquote old church and the, the modern day ICC because, you know, they're faking, you know, they're doing all this external stuff to appear like they, you know, they have this whole, we see you, we hear you thing. Well, you know, all this rhetoric of, we see you, we, we hear you, you know, it's not bad to take care. You know, we encourage you to, to take care of yourself. We encourage you to take, you know, a mental health day. We encourage all, you know, all these, these things that were an, were an obvious issue in the past that, that yes, I will admit that, you know, in the past, those things were not encouraged at all and not just in, not encouraged. I mean, it was, people would come down hard on you. I mean, it was, it was brutal, but the control is still there. 
and it and but it's better to have control you can see versus this subtle control that's in the air that's lingering in the air that that's undertone to the language being used that's you know ever so subtle but ever so ever so strong and 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 it's a glass cage and i did a video called the icoc is a glass cage it is a glass cage it's a you know you you can't see that you're in a cage and that's why it's glass because of the subtle you know and, and the, oh yeah we have this group for this and this group for that we see you we hear you you know we're meeting the needs of the people where you know we're not like how we used to be you know it's okay to it's okay to do this it's okay to do that now it's okay to be yourself it's okay to fill in the blank but is it okay and that's something you know that each person has to answer especially when they break the rules and not the overt rules with the modern day icoc it's the unspoken rules see most of the time you know it's the spoken rules with the icc but with the icoc it's a lot of the unspoken rules that are holding things in place and it's making you miserable it's controlling your life it's ruining your life so break one of those unspoken rules and find out you know as they say f around and find out and that's exactly what it is in the modern day icoc so any thoughts feel free to share them and thanks for being here if you made it to the end of the video so hopefully see you again soon